Good morning, Algebra 1 students. Welcome back. Today is Unit 3, Day 2, and we're going to be talking about the area model and multiplying. All right, so I'm probably thinking two things here, area model and, and multiplying. What is an area model? And that's what we're going to do. And today we're, uh, we're going to introduce what an area model is and understand how the area model helps us to multiply algebraic expressions. And at the same time, we're going to be applying laws of exponents to algebraic expressions. So those, those little tricks that Mr. Rule showed you in yesterday's video about how to handle exponents when multiplying things, we're going to be using that today as well. All right, so let's just do a little bit of review here. And I'm hoping that at some point in middle school, someone taught you how to find the area of a rectangle. All right, so if, uh, if you're not familiar with that, uh, the area of a rectangle, right? area of rectangle is length times width, right? Uh, some, some people might use height times width or base times height or something, but essentially you take the two different sides of the rectangle and you multiply them. All right, so real quick example here, I have a rectangle, this side is three, we can consider that to be the width, and this side is five, we can consider that to be the length. And then we do three times five to find the area, and we discover that the area is 15, right? Because three times five is 15. All right, so now we might get something a little bit more complicated like this one here, right? So we see two rectangles that are kind of like side by side, and they form to make one big rectangle. And our goal is to find the area of both of the smaller ones and of the entire rectangle that we see in this diagram. So this one we should be familiar with, right? We see a three, we see a five, so we have a width, we have a length, so three times five gives us 15, which is the area of just this rectangle on the left here, right? We haven't figured out this one yet. All right, so we just, we have to remember a couple of properties about rectangles here in that if this side is three, that means this side is three, right? And if this side is five, that means its opposite side is also gonna be five. So now I can come over here and I see my two sides for this rectangle, right? The length is seven and the height is three or the width is three. And if I do seven times three, I get 21, All right? So I have the area of this rectangle and the area of this rectangle here. So if I wanna find the area of the entire rectangle, I would just add these two areas together, All right? So I would do 15, plus 21, and that would get me a total area of 36. Okay, so let's kick it up one more notch here. All right, so we've got a big rectangle, right? So here's the whole rectangle, and then we have four smaller rectangles, okay? So we're gonna first find the area of the four smaller rectangles, and then we will add those four rectangles together to get the entire thing, okay? So remember, opposite sides of rectangles are always the same, right? So if this is three, that means this is three, which means this is three. And if this is five, that means this side down here is also five, which means this side down here is also five. And then the seven would go here and here. The two, right, if this side is two, this is the opposite side here, so I could put a two here as well and I could put a two over here. So now I literally have the measurement of every single side that is in this diagram. And calculating the area should be pretty simple. Length, width, we get 15. Seven times three, 21. Two times five, 10. All right, seven times two, 14. So now if I want the area of the entire thing, I just have to add up the four smaller rectangles. Okay, so let's do that. We got 15 plus 21 plus 10 plus 14. And I'm going to be real lazy here. and I'm going to use my calculator to add those things up for me. If it'll turn on. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to do 15 plus 21 plus 10 plus 14. There we go. So we get a total area of 60, right? So 60 is our total area for the whole rectangle, all right? 
All right, so why did we do that? Why did we review rectangles in Algebra 1? What do they have to do with anything? Well, I am extremely glad that you asked that question. Uh, we can actually use this kind of model, this area approach, to help us with multiplying algebraic expressions. Okay, so let me do a quick example here. So notice here that we have an algebraic expression and we're multiplying five by x plus three. Right, so this is an algebraic expression because we have introduced a variable. Right, so it's not all numbers like it was in the previous examples. All right, and you'll notice that I have a rectangle uh, thing set up down here, and I'm going to show you how we can take this and put it into this area model. But before we do that, we need to recognize what it is we're multiplying. All right, so I'm going to take a minute here, and I'm going to highlight the two things that we are multiplying. You'll notice uh, there are two things. All right, so there's the five and then I'm gonna switch colors here, and the five is being multiplied by x plus three, okay? So I wanna make sure those are two different colors for a reason, and that's so that you can recognize what it is exactly that we are multiplying. It's the five and the x plus three. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the five and I'm gonna let that represent the height of the rectangle. So I'm gonna write a five over here. And then this x plus 3, you'll notice that there are two things inside of it. There's an x and there's a 3, but it's going to represent the length of the entire rectangle. So I'm going to put an x here, representing this length from here to here, and then I'm going to let the 3 represent the length from here to here. So I have 5, x, and 3, and because this had two things inside of it, that's why I split this rectangle in two. That way I had two places to put the two things inside of the parentheses. And then using what we learned above in our previous examples, I can take opposite sides right, and translate them down. Right? So if that's going to be a 3, this is going to be a 3. If this is a 5, that means this is a 5, which means this is a 5. And then I can go through and multiply. Right? So if I do 5 times x, well, we don't know what x is, so the best that we can say here is 5x. Over here, I can do 5 times 3, which is 15. And then I can just add the two boxes together. All right, so we would say 5x plus 15. Okay? And this is how you would leave it. All right, now, a lot of students make the mistake of actually trying to add these together, but if you remember Mr. Rule's lesson yesterday about like terms, we can only add two things together if they are like terms. These are not like terms because this one has an x and this one does not. So this is how we would leave our answer. All right, if, if someday we figured out what that x value was, we can plug that in and, and actually add them together. But right now, we don't know what that is, so we just have to leave our expression written like this. So we can say 5 times x plus 3 is equal to 5x plus 15. Okay. Let's try it again. So here I'm going to, again, highlight the two things that we are multiplying. Right, so we've got an x. and we have this x plus 4. All right, so those are going to represent the two sides of my rectangle. So I'm going to let the x represent the height, and I'm going to let the x plus 4 represent the length. Okay, so now I'm going to go through and I'm going to multiply here. I've got x times x, which is x squared. So again, you have to recall what Mr. Rule was showing you in yesterday's lesson. All right, these both have an exponent of one. When we don't write the exponents up above, we get to assume that they're one. And since we're multiplying those, we would add the exponents. One plus one gives us two. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing over here. Right? So remember, if this is x, that means this thing way over here is also x. So we would do four times x, which is four x. And then we just have to add them together. So we've got x squared plus 4x. Then you have to evaluate, are these like terms? Can I actually add them together? The answer is no, right? They have the same variable, but they're not raised to the same power. And okay? so again, just drawing on that lesson from yesterday, these are being added, so they have to have the same variable raised to the same power. This one's being raised to a power of one, this one's being raised to a power of two, so there's no way that we can add those. So this is our final expression, okay? So we can say x times x plus four 
is equal to x squared plus 4x. Okay. Let's try some more. We're going to kick it up a notch here. Okay. So again, identify what's being multiplied. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to identify I see two things being multiplied. I see x plus 3. And I see this 2x plus 6. Okay. And you'll notice that when I look at those two things that are being multiplied, each of them have two things inside of them, right? So inside those parentheses, there are two things, All right? So we have an x and a 3 here. So I'm just going to let that, the x and the 3, represent the height. And then for this one, I'm going to take the 2x and the 6 and let those represent the length. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to multiply, right? And so remember, if this is x, this is going to be x over here. If this is 3, this will be 3 over here. 6 translates down here, and 2x down here, okay? You don't have to write those in if you don't need to. If you, if you feel like you can just do the multiplication with just this, that's fine too. All right, so now I'm going to go through. I've got x times 2x, okay? So if you, if you need to, you can put a 1 here, right? So we do 1 times 2, which is 2 and then x times x, which is x squared. And then we go over here, we got six times x, so that's just gonna be six x. And then here we're gonna have three times two x, so we'll have six x again. And then over here we'll have six times three, which is 18. All right, so now if I wanna find the area of the entire rectangle, I just add those four boxes together. So we have two, x squared plus 6x plus 6x plus 18, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I take a look at it and I ask myself, are there any like terms that can be combined? Okay, and I'm going to highlight there are some like terms in this one that we can combine. Notice that the two 6x's, they have the same variable and they're both raised to the same power. So these two right here, those can be combined. Okay. So we're gonna have two x squared, and then when I add six x and six x together, we get 12 x plus 18. And now when I look at those three terms, they are all different. This one has an x squared, this one has an x, this one has no x at all. So there's no way to combine these any further. Okay, so these represent our final expression. Okay, so x plus three times two x plus six equals two x squared plus 12 x plus 18. Okay, so when we multiply these, we get this. All right, let's try it again here. So here we've got uh, 2y, so that's one of the things that we are multiplying, and then we've got x plus three. All right, so I've got two things that are being multiplied, and so I'm gonna let 2y represent the height, okay? And I'm gonna let x plus three represent the length. And then I'm gonna go through and, and multiply here, and if you need to, you can translate down your opposite sides so here I'm going to do 2y times x, and that one sounds tricky, but it's just 2yx or 2xy. It doesn't matter what order you put those in, but you can't multiply them because they're different. Okay, so you just write it out like that, 2 times x times y. It's as good as it gets. All right, now over here we're going to do 2y times 3. So we can do the 2 times 3, which is 6, and then you would just put your y on that. Then add your two rectangles together. So I'll have 2yx plus 6y. And there we go. Now we cannot combine those. If you're thinking, well, maybe, maybe those are like terms. I can, I can put those together. Nope, this one has an xy. This one only has a y. So they don't have the same variables. You can't add them together. They're not like terms. All right, last one here. And you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, Mr. Weldon, you are crazy. How are we supposed to handle that? All right, and it's not hard at all. We just use the same principles that we've been using. So I identify the things that I'm multiplying. I see two sets of parentheses, so those are the two things that I'm gonna multiply. I have three x plus two, and then in the other parentheses I have x squared plus five x plus six. So those are the two things that are being multiplied. Okay, 
time, and then I look at it. This has two terms. This one has three terms. So when I set up my rectangle, right, I'm going to set up a big rectangle here. And you'll have to set up your own at some point as well. Right? So since this one has two, I'm going to cut it in half this way. And I'm going to take 3x plus 2 and put it across the side. Now remember, this one has three things, right? So we need a column for that first term, right? That's where I'm going to put my x squared. I'm going to need a column for my 5x. So I'll put my 5x here. And you'll notice that we've automatically created a third column, and that's where I'll put my 6, right? So pretty much a column for each term that's inside of that, of that green parenthesis there. Okay. And then like I said, if you need to, you can translate over the opposite sides, right? So you can put the 2 over here, you could put the 3x over here, 6, 5x, and x squared. And then we're just going to go through and we're going to multiply uh, to find the areas of the 6 rectangles that we see in this, in this box, right? So I'm going to do 3x times x squared, right? So if you need to, you can put a 1 here, right? 3 times 1 is 3 and then x times x squared. Remember, this has an exponent of 1, so if I do 1 plus 2, we get 3. So we're going to have 3x to the third. And then same thing here, right? This has an exponent of 1, so I'll do 3 times 5, which is 15. And then x times x is x squared. Now over here, I'll do 3x times 6, so 3 times 6 is 18. And then we have our x. Now down here we have 2 times x squared, so that'll be 2x squared. And then we'll do 2 times 5x, so 2 times 5 is 10. And then there's my x. And then over here on the last rectangle we'll have 2 times 6, which is 12. Okay, so really I haven't done anything different, it's just more of what we were doing before, right? It's a, it's a bigger problem because it's got more terms. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to add up my 6 boxes. So I've got 3x cubed plus 15x squared plus 2x squared. Right? I'm just kind of going through my boxes here. And then I'm going to go 18x plus 10x. So I got these two. And then plus 12. That would be the last box there. All right, so there's my expression. I'm almost done with it. All I have to do now is add like terms. Okay, so I like to grab a highlighter sometimes, just help me keep track, right? So I'm looking at this one, it's got an x to the third power. And then I just go through and I'm looking for anything else that has an x to the third power. There's nothing. So this is not gonna combine with anything. Now I look at this one, this one's got an x squared. So it could combine with this one, All right? So these two could combine and there are no other x squareds to combine with. So it's just going to be those two. All right, and I'll switch over to a different color. So now this has an x, so it could combine with the 10x. All right, those both have an x raised to the first power, so those are like terms. And then the last thing here is just the 12, and there's no other term that has no x's in it. Okay, so this is also all by itself. Okay, so I'm going to grab my pen, and I'm going to start adding things together here. All right, so we got 3x cubed. Did not combine with anything. I have 15 plus 2 here, so that's going to become 17x squared. And then over here, I've got 18 plus 10, so that'll be 28x, and then plus 12. There's my final expression. All right, guys, I uh, hope you found that helpful. If you have questions, make sure you ask in the Zoom chat. Have a great day.